They move in droves, some on foot, others on motorcycle. These Burkina Bays have been trickling into Ghana through both approved and unapproved routes to seek asylum following attacks on them by suspected jihadists. But the level at which they are coming is, is massive. Some have lost their relatives in the deadly attacks. They killed my brother days ago. Not quite long, our neighbors were also attacked and some killed. For this reason, we decided to run because we do not know who is next to be killed. Two relatives of mine were killed by the jihadists. My husband asked to leave with our five-day-old baby to Ghana to seek refuge. This is the first time we are experiencing such violence in our community. Others just couldn't contain the constant threat by the armed gang. We heard gunshots whilst at home. When we stepped out to see what's happening, we saw the police station bent. Our husbands asked us to leave immediately. Burkina Faso is battling a seven-year jihadi insurgency that swept in from neighboring Mali. Thousands of civilians and members of the security forces have died and nearly two million people have fled their homes. The latest attack at Zorga, Abugiri, and Zabri in the southern part of the country has forced more than 3,000 residents of the three communities to flee and seek asylum in neighboring Ghana. The strike left a trail of destruction, according to the asylum seekers, as houses and police stations were burnt at Zorga. As the violence continued to flare in these areas, some inhabitants had to hurriedly leave without getting the chance to pick anything. Others managed to carry their bags and livestock along to border towns in Ghana. At Abugri, a small town in Burkina Faso, the community is almost empty. The over 1,000 residents have fled their homes after they were attacked and threatened to be killed by the jihadists. The community was first attacked on January 13, 2023. About 98% of the houses dotted across this community have been deserted. All the occupants have fled to Ghana because of the recent attacks on them. Awin Songoti Ware is a pastor in this community. He, together with some few friends, have decided to stay. The father of two has however moved his wife and kids to Zebila, a town in the Boku West district of Ghana. He has moved all his family, the rest of the family to Zebila. And he is here alone because of the those that he's taking care of. He would have wished to also join them, but because of those who are lying and cannot move, and then he's also a man of God. If you are to protect people. And we are rather running away from them, what would be the, uh, the reward. So it's better for him to stay and take care of the... Anani Akungende came into contact with the armed gang. 
said they were here in the one evening, and then the jihadists they came. When they came, they came and told them that yes, they are here not to take their lives, but here to warn them to tell those who are having the guns to better return the guns to the British Navy government, or else when they come back, they will not spare them. Bamza have been on. For several hours, Gamata Mumuni and her 17 children and grandchildren trekked from Abugri to Sogo in the Boku West District to seek refuge. <laughs> Armed men came to our community and threatened us to leave or risk being shot. We had to move to another community in Burkina Faso before working close to four hours to Ghana. It has been a terrible experience for us and we are still in shock. The 58-year-old and her family are being hosted by a long-distance relative in Sogo. They have been provided with shelter but feeding them adequately is a challenge. I am doing my possible best to make them comfortable here, but providing them with food is not regular. Because of them, I have doubled my trading efforts to earn more and cater for them. It is not easy though, because I am already looking after five children and two old women. Gamate and her family are among thousands of women and children who have fled to the northeastern Ghana amid rising violence. The Boku West District has officially registered at least 2,000 of the asylum seekers, but the number could be more. What we formally registered was 2,274. But there are other uh, registration that has been done that we haven't put together. Uh, but in my own estimation, we should be heading towards 3,000 or 4,000. The education of these children is in limbo for now. Mbila, like many of his age mates, wish to return to the classroom. The eight-year-old who aspires to be a military officer is saddened by his inability to continue his studies, especially as he always sees his Ghanaian counterpart in Sogo going to school. I enjoy going to school. My inability to return to the classroom and study for now is worrying me. I wish all this come to an end so we return in our community for me to be able to continue my education. Even before relevant government agencies come to the aid of the asylum seekers, chiefs, and people of the various border towns have warmly welcomed them. Churches, individual homes, and chief palace have become a safe haven for the displaced Burkina Bays. As the Bible says that we should bear one another burden. So immediately the chief informed me that they have arrived, there was no place for them to uh, stay, I asked them to come and have the shelter inside the church. District Chief Executive for Boko West explained why camps have not been established for the asylum seekers. We as Dai said, we, we look beyond guess what people are seeing. Now, there are so many things that we are looking at. Now, if you have to set up a camp, and you know the kind of people that are coming, if you have to put them into one, it means that you are going to even attract more people to come because they will be comfortable 
house there and you will have to take care of everything of them, isn't it? You have to provide breakfast, you have to provide lunch, you have to provide supper, you have to make sure that all the sanitation needs are provided and those kind of things. That is not going to be an easy thing. It's quite apart from that, security-wise, if we are afraid of this jihad, this coming and they are random, then it means that it's easier to target. Because once you know the location that this is where the people are and you, you, you want them, it's easier to target. We wouldn't want to be faced with that kind of thing. So the way they are living now, they are disguised. You understand? Now if you put them into the camp and people will want to stay in the camp and plan anything, it's easier. But once you are, they are staying in somebody's house, if you are in my house and I suspect your movement, I will report to the authorities and they will easily pick you up. And it comes to the, the, the point where that we, there's the need to set up that camp, then higher authority will take those decisions and will know what to do. So these people you see behind me are all Burkina Bay nationals who have run to Ghana to seek asylum because of the disturbances in their various communities. So all the people you see behind me are Burkina Bay nationals who have run to Ghana to seek asylum because of disturbances in their various communities. Here at the border town with Naba, over 1,700 of them have come in within five days. For most of these asylum seekers, they would have wished to return to their various communities. But as to whether those places are safe for them to return, it's a question they keep asking themselves. The Burkina Bays have found safety under the watch of their Ghanaian hosts, but life is hard. Accessing regular food aid is tough. There's no place for them, so they stay with the community members. They, they eat with them, and this is also a, a big challenge in the community, if the government can assist, because this year um, we have... Uh, a lot of people lost their harvest due to this elephant right, and they are living under a STEM economic housing right now. And this is the case that Burkina Bays too uh, also came in addition. So if the government can um, assist us. And he's saying that since they came, it's about nine days now. It's not been easy feeding them. Uh, we can imagine the number of children that have come to the community. Feeding them from morning, evening, it's not easy. And the community member will have to at least contribute food staff and clothing and other things to support uh, the, those who have come, the foreigners. So it's not been easy. He has cried to government, but he has still not received any support from government. The Sogo chief is providing shelter for more than 50 women and their children at his palace. Local areas where the asylum seekers have settled are struggling to cope with the influx as more keep coming. Concerns of insecurity are being raised. We are living in fear and panic. Because we say border with them, and those who have even run to our community, we don't know whether all of them are asylum seekers. Maybe some of them might be the jihadists who have followed them to the community. So we actually live in fear and panic. But we are hoping that things will normalize so that as they go back, at least we can have full security within our community. Now, we are even thinking that whether they have come with kind of diseases. Because they have come, nobody has come to screen them. We don't know whether they have some disease with them or not. So that is another fear that we are entertaining. And we are trying to reach out to government so that if they can screen them. There's fear in the community because there are no any military around here. So we don't know what will happen in the night. And these people are with the community members. There's no particular place where they camp the refugees. Uh, they can pass at any, any angle and cross. So if the government can also um, deploy security men, it will also help. Day in, day out, especially during the night, the community members are very scared of what is happening uh, to our neighbors, the Burkina people. 
you know Sapelga is a border town, and very close to where the scene is happening. The scene is, which is uh, Signogu and then the Kwantore. So most of the Fulanis there have run into the community called Sapelga to seek for shelter. Uh, we need more security in Sapelga to be able to also protect the community people themselves because we don't know why, what is happening to the Burkina base there. And uh, whether those jihadists will be coming to Ghana here to also attack us or not, uh, that one too, we can't also tell. Adib Sani is a security analyst. There are a lot of um, implications uh, so far as uh, this influx continues. Um, so far as I am concerned, the Burkina authorities have handed over heavy weaponry to uh, locals who volunteered to help stem the tide of, you know, territorial gain by the terrorists. As a result, these terrorists are attacking villages and towns looking for these um, uh, people who have decided to volunteer. Um, sometimes the communities are overwhelmed, okay, especially when they are attacked in the thick of the night. So you have a lot of civilians, including these volunteers, running into Ghana. So the possibility that soon, we might have the terrorists chasing them all over into Ghana's territory to attack them. It's very high. Okay, that is why we, we need to really be cautious. At Sapelega, a community watchdog committee has teamed up with the immigration offices to ensure the safety of residents. They position themselves around some of the unapproved border routes to screen and escort the displaced Burkina base to the communities. There were reports that some of the asylum seekers were asked to return to their home country due to their influx. Abbas Caesar is a member of the Sapelega Watchdog Committee. They said uh, jihadists came to their place, attacked their neighbors, even killed some of their family members. So therefore, they are afraid that they are could, they could also be what killed. So they are running into this community. So finally, we called the police uh, in charge here, informed him, also informed the immigration. They came with their team to the point. So we finally we agreed that we should move them to their border. They said they wanted to take some profiling. To, as to how many people are and where they are going a whole lot. So we moved them to their point. So they also called their district commander. He came around and said, no, looking at this group, they cannot keep them here. All they need to do is to take them back to where they are coming from. So they said we should look for a means or a transport that can convey them to the border point. So we had a motorcane that also picked some of them. And then they also used their pickup, convey some to the point. We left them there and then return back to Ghana. They were agitating that there's no way they could go back to Burkina. You know, security, you cannot tell what they have seen or what they know, or the intelligence they have also had and realized that they need to go back. We don't really know, but finally, that is all what they said, that they cannot keep them here than to have to let them go back to where they are coming from. Security analyst Adib Sani described returning the asylum seekers as unacceptable. It makes me wonder on what basis uh, they will be sent back because it's against international law. It is illegal uh, to do that. What usually is done is you accept them or process them. And if you find out that someone might be more of a burden in terms of our security, then you simply repatriate the person back to wherever he came from. But as soon as they come in, then you turn them away. It's, it's, it's not the right thing to, to do. Um, it, it doesn't create goodwill. And when you do that, it falls very much in the hands of the terrorists who have stated over and over again that um, central administrations, governments are not your friends. We are your friends. We are fighting for you. The central administrations, they are corrupt. They are not there to represent your interest. So when you do that, you are actually uh, dancing to the tune of the terrorists. That is already what they seek to portray. They are the friends, we are the enemies, okay? So I think we need to be very cautious in our approach towards 
uh, the way we the way we handle uh, some of these things. It is absolutely uh, unacceptable to send them back in in that manner without uh, doing any uh, diligent uh, checks. But the district chief executive for Boko West had to intervene. That particular concern, I got, I got the decision, but I authorized that they should not send them back. You see, all this thing that we are doing, we are also mindful of international laws. If you are fleeing out of trouble, we can't send you back to the trouble area. But we will screen you, and that's what I'm saying, that our main concern is our own protection. Because if their husbands were killed, uh, their husband jihadis, or who are those that were killed. So we need to, to get into deeper investigation to understand. So I told immigration to hand them to the police so that they can do the, 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 the deeper, uh, what we call it, investigation before we then take a decision. It's not good enough to get say, okay, you are this, so go back, go back to where? You understand, because maybe they are running from trouble area. We are also, even though we are so careful, but we are, don't, I don't think that we want to put people's lives in danger. So we will look at our own protection. We will also look at the, 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 the protection of the person that is in our hand, so that together we will see what it is. So uh, generally, those people haven't been sent back. They are available, but they are not, they are under scrutiny. They are looking at their background to see exactly what they can do. For now, people are coming in, we are showing sympathies. But our main responsibility is to protect Ghanaians, not those who are coming in. We are only getting showing sympathy because they have problems there and they are our neighbors. But our main concern is our, our own people. You might think that those who are coming in are really people who need help, but they might just be the very people that we are afraid of. So how do we know? Because the jihadists don't have anything on their face to, under, to, to show that we are here. They are just human beings like us. When they put off their arms, they are against normal people. So it's difficult to know who actually needs help and who is a jihadi. So our main task is to ensure that we screen these people properly before we, we, we accept them into the, into the country. The Boku West District Security Council has strengthened surveillance on the Ghana-Burkina Faso border to prevent infiltration of insurgents among the Burkina base running to Ghana. The issues of Islamic extremists is, is, is a concern. It's not only for Ghana, but for all the, 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 the country. It has happened in the Mali. You see how Mali went. It has happened in part of Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Togo, and Burkina Faso is facing this squarely. So I'm not sure Ghana is different. All that we are going to show the difference is to protect our territory. People who are coming, we screen them to make sure that they are not people of questionable character. In terms of providing security, we are very conscious about it. We are very apt to it. If you look at the police, you look at the military, right away from Tilly, the forest from Tilly, up to Winaba, the hills there, getting to Kubongo, Tisi, and those kind of things, the military has taken cover. The security services would have to be up and doing. Uh, we need better intelligence on the ground. Uh, NATMO and other agencies would have to be prepared 24-7 uh, because you never know when the terrorists would attack. You never know when people would troop in. That is why we need to maintain uh, permanent presence in all of these communities. So anyone who comes in will take the uh, person's information, including his bad data and, of course, uh, his um, uh, fingerprints, etc. So we are able to keep an eye on whoever comes into the country. But I must say, um, the mainstream security services cannot do this alone. They cannot be everywhere all the time. That is why it's critical that the communities play a major role. I know some announcements have been made in the past. If anyone is coming from Burkina and staying with you, please let us know because we need to keep a central register. Um, but people are not doing so because they are just being nonchalant. So with education, people would get to understand that they have a very important role to play in safeguarding their communities by reporting whatever they see. We also need um, 
a, a progressive incentive regime for anyone who would avail him or herself uh, to, 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 to be counted. Um, may, maybe if you come, we'll give you a mattress, we'll give you some rice, we'll give you some wheat, et cetera. I think that should uh, encourage people to come forward to uh, be, be taking note of going forward. The expectation by many is for calm to be restored in the troubled towns of Burkina Faso. But we are hoping that the situation in Burkina at least would have uh, calm there. If we are able to restore calm there, at least we'll, the people will be able to go back. And as they go back, the community can also do whatever activities that we are doing. Because for now, a lot of people cannot go to work. You have strangers in your house. You can't move to any place at all and leave them alone in the house. While some wait for normalcy to be restored so they return to their home country, others are indecisive. Here is safer, but we want to go back home when peace is restored. Leaving your home with all your livelihood there is not easy. That, well, they cannot tell. Here is safer. They prefer to be here than to go back. Because when they go back, they will survive it. 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 The jihadists, not that people are telling them. They themselves, they've seen them killing people, fili fili, at their place. So they have to run into Ghana. As they are standing, they don't have anything. So the only thing, they wish to stay here, but they have no money to build or to put a structure for them to live on. They are appealing if somebody can come to their eat to get their shelter, they will be here than to go back. For the assignment, I am Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3.